If you're hunting for primary English ICT resources that might just spell success, then take a look at the three CD-ROMs that we've got on today's Resource Review ICT Special. They are a visual tool for mind mapping, a method for incorporating real-life experience into lessons, and an interactive mystery story to inspire budding writers. Recommending today's resources is Adrian Shepherd, a primary strategy consultant for literacy at Cambridgeshire Advisory Service. On the panel today is Adrienne Jones, a freelance education consultant, and Kate Ruttle, deputy head teacher in Senko at Great Heath Primary School in Suffolk. And Kate's been trying out the resources in her lessons. Now, over in the test lab, our resident ICT investigator, Matthew Tosh, will be putting the resources through a rigorous examination. Well, Adrian, your first choice of resource for us today, it's called Kidspiration. <laughs> what is this resource and what makes it stand out? There are many different uh, pieces of software out there that are there to help the children to mind map okay. and to develop their ideas and, and increase their, their ability to think and, and be creative. This particular one, I think, is most in tune with how children operate and therefore is the most successful. So here I've taken the opening from a uh, well-known children's book and just to, to demonstrate how this that can be used by the children, we can take a, a central theme, as we have here, the title of the book, and then we can add to that as many um, different aspects as we wish. And I think that's where there's a lot of power, not just in creating plans for stories, but in analysing and developing comprehension around what the children are reading. OK, well, thank you very much. Let's go over to Matthew for the first time and see whether he's drawn any inspiration from Kidspiration. You may remember your college or university days when you had to plan an assignment on paper before putting it down in words. Well, Kidspiration allows children to do a similar thing on screen. Well, here's my project. It's about going on a holiday and I want to add a few more ideas. So I'm going to add an idea now about transport. And here's my thought bubble. I'm going to add some text. Now I think we're going to be travelling by train, so I'd like to add a picture to this one. And the pictures can be added from the left hand side. I can change my topic by clicking on the arrows there, or I can use this drop down menu to select from a multitude of different topics. And there are over 200 images on this piece of software to choose from. Uh, there's my picture of a train, which we'll just drag in there, and I can add some text as well. Now once I've got my ideas on the screen, I can join them together using this arrow tool here. Now the really clever bit is bringing this into a text format and you click on the text tool here. And whilst I've been organising my pictures, the software will organise my thoughts on the page. I've started to embellish some of my thoughts with some sentences and I can still go about reorganising the order. So once I've finished writing my ideas down, I can publish it to Word. Now you can also export to other formats using the export tool here. So the software offers complete flexibility for organising ideas. You could do concept maps, grouping, topics together, all sorts of, all sorts of things. In fact, anything that can be organised on paper can be organised on here. In fact, I wonder if it will do my shopping list. Well, Adrian, Matthew seems to really like this resource, but he did say that anything you can do on paper, you can do on the resource. So why not just use a piece of paper? No, I think that this can do more than paper can. The, the flexibility, for example, we can move any item anywhere, not, not just within a particular area, but change its position entirely. We can also make links. And I think that's very key for the children. We could draw one aspect up to another to show that link that wouldn't be possible on paper without arrows covering the entire page. Right, OK. All right, well, now let's go and see what Kate thought of it. You've tried this with your pupils. Yes. What happened? What I thought would be interesting to see, what would happen if I gave it to some children and said, have a go, because I'm interested to see how intuitive it is, because since I've used it before, I know what it does. And I gave it to two year four girls, and what the children produced was a mind map about animals. And they actually discovered very quickly, they had about 20 minutes, almost all of the features that Matthew was talking about on the screen. And I thought, very powerful for two eight-year-old children who've never seen this before to come in and create a mind map from scratch. OK. Well, Adrienne, what do you think of this resource for primary literacy? 
I like its intuitive nature and the fact that you can play around with it. I'd like to be sure that it would be very structured in the sense that um, a story like that, fantastic tool to be able to structure characters, what's happening next, where you go, and the fact that you can transfer it to word if you want to, you, it then makes a story up of its own. But there was there's one little picture here which I think is absolutely fascinating. Now, what is that? What is that? It's dental floss. <laughs> oh, right. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Can I just um, raise a point? It's, it's not a cheap resource. It is quite a significant investment. I think Adrian would probably say it's worth it. Kate? My school's invested in it. Right. So we thought it was worth it. And we use it on whiteboards and we use it across the curriculum and throughout the school. Well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Adrian's second choice of resource. And it's another CD-ROM. It's from Too Simple. It's called Simple City. So, Adrian, again, what is it about this resource that you like so much? This is a fantastic resource for bringing new technologies into children's play. There are lots of possibilities for teacher-initiated activities and play as well, but it's the child-initiated that I think has real potential here. So what does it actually do? What is this resource? Right, we have, as you, as you can see on the screen, a number of different areas of the city, as it, as it were. Um, we have the, the playground, the farm, if I go into to the vets now, and we'll start there, you can see that you have access to different types of resource. You have stills that are linked with, with voiceover. You have um, graphics that provide activities. Um, so, for example, we can go to our vets. We can um, select an animal. We can provide that animal with food. We can provide that animal um, with things like collars, with any medication it might need. So the children are working not only on their knowledge, but their understanding of many aspects of the curriculum. It's, it's about speaking and listening, it's about developing vocabulary, and if the children aren't developing that in the early stages of their education, then there are going to be issues with reading and writing later on. Now let's go over to Matthew again to see if he found this a simple resource to use. When you launch Simple City, you're presented with a screenshot of different locations within the city. And to visit a place, you just click on it. So I think we'll start with the garden centre. Well, here you can see the activities that are available. And we're going to start by looking at a video. Garden centres grow seeds and plants for people to buy to plant in their garden. And we can have a look now at some children perspectives as well. George and Nicole are going to tell you about the garden centre they have at their nursery. We're digging in the earth to go to tomato plants. There's an activity now, and the first activity in each section is usually the simplest, so I'll have a go at this one. And essentially I can plant seedlings and different plants, and then I can water them to encourage them to grow a little bit more. Once that's complete, you can even print it out. What I do like about this resource is it's very user-friendly, particularly the dialogue boxes that you see here. They're easy buttons to click on. Well, I want to show you one more activity now. It's a sorting one, and it's in the zoo section. Bird. Very good. Magpie. You're a star. Rabbit. Not quite. One thing I did notice, though, looking at this resource, is the variation in sound quality is immense. I can show you what I mean by clicking on the rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. And comparing it to the sheep. Sheep. There's a big difference in the volume level, so you need to control the volume to avoid frightening small children. And now I'll hand you to something less frightening, Hermione and the panel. Well, Adrian, Matthew picked up on this rather fundamental point that the, there were sound issues with this resource. The volume does vary in, in some cases, and so where one moment the sound might be quiet, the next moment it will be very loud. And to be fair, that is a problem. I mean, Adrienne, to you, is it's quite a big problem? Well, there was one particular area within the zoo when the photographs were being shown, and there was a voiceover, and you could hear what was people talking in the office behind it. Now, actually, that was such a shame because the product itself is really good. Kate, what do you think? Again, very intuitive. They particularly have, we had enormous fun in the zoo. And if you go into the zoo, there were lovely little animations. Look, the shark yeah. becomes George. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> and this lovely lizard here climbs up trees. 
And it's actually a wonderful way of looking with the children at things like how creatures move. OK, well now let's move on to our third resource today. It's another CD-ROM and it's called The Lost Boy. So Adrian, tell us about this one. Um, I think out in the market at the moment there are a number of story-based ICT techs. This one I think is at the top end of the market in terms of the quality. You have animation but you also have real images and I think that's a strength. It, so it does appear very real to, to the children. The storyline uh, is, is built around choice. So at a point here, as we can see for the first time, I can make a decision as to where I want to investigate. And at any time, I can go further um, and use the text um, and, and analysis features to be able to, to look at that particular item in detail. And I can take a tour through the story, so I can sit backwards and forwards. Now, this resource alone won't have an impact on children's learning. This resource needs to be built within a unit of work where the children are exploring this practically so that the children develop their skills of comprehension and empathy right. as well as analysing the story to inform their own writing later on. OK, thank you very much. Well, now over to the panel. Kate, what did you make of this one? I have very mixed feelings about it. I think they've chosen a fairly slim storyline in order to build all the stuff around it. And actually, I would much rather be using Kidspiration and doing what you were doing with the Kidspiration earlier on as a way of developing understanding and comprehension and speaking and listening and writing around a story than something like this, which is expensive. And I have to say, I've never yet been convinced to buy Digitext because I think there's an awful lot that's good about them, but not enough. Adrienne, what do you think of this resource? I want to make a comment about the support booklet, which is amazing. It has so much detail and um, it actually gives teachers a huge amount of information. In some ways, I thought it was a bit too overloaded right. and there's an awful lot to take in. I agree that the, the book contains too much detail, but I think as with all resources, there needs to be that message that you take this and you make it yours in your curriculum. OK, well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we looked at were Kidspiration by Inspiration Software USA, available in the UK from Tag Learning, Simple City from Too Simple Software, and The Lost Boy from the Digitext series published by Pearson Longman. For more information about the resources featured today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So a very big thank you to our panel, to Adrian, to Kate, and to Adrienne. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>